Ha <laughs> ha! I was right! I made two Ember videos, that secret shadow organization that terrorizes vigilante heroes. The older one is worse, so if you want to watch one, watch the Ember Thoughts video, mainly because I actually presented two theories there, and they were both correct. The first theory, the one I was more confident on, was that Blake's superhero name was going to be Nobody, to which, hey, I was right. But the main topic was Ember, and another small theory I had was that Ember was connected to the authorities. The evidence I had in that in my older and worse video was that for a shadow organization, they were known by basically everyone. Not what a shadow organization should be known for. Almost like they were trying to send a message. Also, this quote from Remy was a red flag. But don't you find it a bit strange? Well, high and elite tiers are very well respected in society. With all the positive reviews superheroes were receiving in the beginning, you think the authorities would have backed them up or tried a bit harder to solve the murders. But none of the cases I've collected have ever been resolved. We can't jump to conclusions yet. But I think it's safe to assume that the authorities have no intentions of going after Ember. For a group killing a bunch of kids, you would assume the authorities would want to take care of it, or would care at least. And our last bit of evidence was a weird design moment. There was a strange, and in my personal opinion, really cool marketing choice to advertise on Ordinary with Ember reports. These reports are on Arlo, Remy, Serafina, and John. And John is the one I want to talk about right now. His report has this line. Son of William H. Doe. The author... Why would a dangerous shadow organization censor the book title on Ordinary? It could be that they were given some software or data from the authorities. And since Unordinary is banned, it's likely that they would have a word censor in place. Anyways, all this evidence pointed to Ember being part of the authorities, rather being a separate group or like a separate distinct branch or maybe like a secretive branch or whatever. Not to mention the cherry on the top. We've gotten direct confirmation from Caden, our teleporting friend. Ember is a special task force created and backed by the authorities. Ding, 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 ladies and gentlemen and everyone else, we got him. One of my only theories proven to be correct so far. Huh. How often am I wrong? Unimportant. What is important is that I was right. I was right. And there's no need to talk about it more. Just take your victory and... Okay, okay. Look. This seems a little too clean. A bit too easy. If watching game theory has taught me anything is that Occam's Razor, the simplest solution, is likely the correct one. However, if reading webtoon series like Purple Hyacinth and Everything is Fine, and I can't wait to talk about this series, has taught me not to take everything on its face value. Will I be proving my own theories wrong? Mm, yes and no. But I think it's important to talk about Ember. Ember is an important and weirdly fantastical storyline in Unordinary. We're given the more human storyline of Wellston students. John struggle with mental health, self-worth, and identity. A struggle I've talked about before and will talk about soon, just as soon as we get more of the current arc we're in. Also, we've gotten the question of how to change our outdated social policies, or how we need to change ourselves. This story is much more relatable, but even in its grandest form, it's not a story that affects the world too much. It's a story of Wellston, but not the world. No matter what changes in Wellston, it's unlikely that it'll change the world. Meanwhile, the Ember storyline is much more spectacular and much more a world issue, you know? Versus a school, a bunch of kids getting killed and appearing on the news is much more well known to the world and much more affecting the world. But it's also been a major mystery for a long time. And to have it explained to us so simply seems a bit too easy for me. That as soon as we get the smallest amount of information on one of them, then we get the answer that many of us expected given to us with no pushback. 
And it's not like I don't trust Caden, but let's not forget he's part of a group that nullifies people's abilities and kidnaps them. Even if he or Lila, Layla, oh my gosh, I can't pronounce names, weren't responsible for Serafina's attack, they're still responsible for other people's attacks. I'm just saying we don't need to trust him 100%. So am I making a theory that Ember isn't part of the authorities? No. I can't. With the evidence I provide at the beginning, it's unlikely that Ember has zero connection to the authorities. There's just too much evidence, not to mention a good reason. That reason being control, which I'll get to soon enough. What I'm making a theory on is Ember's relation to Spectre. We're told that there isn't one, but I doubt that. There's been too much evidence that these groups are similar or have a connection. In fact, the webtoon made a point to push the similarities of these groups. Yes, they did point out the differences too. Actually, Aizen was the main one to see the differences. But I took it upon myself to make a list of differences between the groups. You can pause to see all the differences or point out something I said that was incorrect. But something I did note was how different they are. They're incredibly different. Almost polar opposites of each other. So much so that it's too convenient. And it's also interesting that the moment we started learning more about Spectre is a moment it draws a line between itself and Ember. But if that's all the evidence I had, I would be crazy for trying to convince what has already been spoken in Unordinary. No, I have a little more, and it's mainly due to these. The Ember reports I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. They help pin Ember a little more to the authorities. For example, Arlo's report. Most of the other reports are connections or events. I'll get to Serafina's, but John was his connection to his dad, and Remy was her connection to her brother and X-Ray, her vigilante persona. Meanwhile, Arlo isn't about anything like that. No family connections or anything like that. His felt a little more personal. Calling him strategic and telling others to approach with caution. Also, what's weird is under his portrait, it says acquire powers. And we can compare this to Remy's eliminate targets, even though Arlo is stronger. This could be for a couple reasons. First, they might have already acquired Remy's powers through Rey, as they have the same power. And they know about their relationship. The other reason is a little more complicated. The two important things to note about Arlo's report is it's much more personal than the others, and that they only want to acquire his powers. In my Ember Thoughts video, I chalked this up to his aunt, who we haven't met at the time, who was said to be part of the authorities, maybe being part of Ember. This could explain why it was a little more personal, also why it's acquire powers instead of eliminate target. If Arlo's aunt is part of Ember, then she might not want to kill her nephew. Granted, I know that his aunt and Vulcan have different abilities, but it could be her sister, like a twin sister. Or, more likely, Ember has figured out a way to transfer or give powers. But what also could be the case is that Arlo isn't a threat of because who Arlo was before. Someone who didn't want to disrupt the status quo. Someone who stuck to the rules to a T. So much so that he got dethroned because of it. As we hear from Serafina, to me, it's clear authorities want to regulate high tiers and suppress the ones who refuse to follow their rules. Superheroes easily fit that bill. Arlo doesn't disrupt the natural flow, or at least didn't. Now he's more changing into that. That's why they don't view him as a threat, because Ember wants to crush those who don't follow, and Arlo does follow. Why am I talking about this? Oh, something to note was acquire powers. Ember has never, never been established to acquire powers or really do anything with that kind of stuff. Sure, they have ability boosters, but nothing involving acquiring powers. In fact, I don't see how they can. They give ability boosters to people who purchase them. And even when they kill someone, they just kind of leave their body as a sign. If they wanted to acquire powers, why don't they bring the body? That way they have easy access to aura veins. I don't really know the anatomy of human beings in the world of Unordinary. 
But you know a group that does have something to do with abilities? Spectre. In fact, they likely kidnap people in order to test abilities? Are we going to talk about why they were kidnapping Serafina? Like, they were very willing and comfortable kidnapping a person, so it's definitely not the first time they've done this. And something else interesting is in Serafina's reports. Unlike everyone else, her report mentions exhibits no sign of power recovery. Huh. How could Serafina have been previously acquired? There's really only one moment where she got stabbed by a needle, or maybe when they invaded her home, but Serafina hasn't had any run-ins with Ember, both when these reports came out and even while I'm writing this script. Why would this be in her Ember report? How would Ember know? Sure, maybe they know she lost her ability, but as we've seen, Spectre is the one that has a spy on the inside. That being Terence, not Ember. But even if they had a spy on the inside, how would they know that Serafina's powers have been acquired? This is why I'm making this video. The answer we got is what we wanted to hear. Ember is part of the authorities. That's the theory we've all had. But by saying that, it's ignoring so much other evidence we've gotten. What am I saying? What is the point of this video? I don't know if this is true or not. But Spectre has too many connections to them for them to be separate. Not to mention, Spectre isn't exactly in the clear either. They're known for... Not legal things. They're not the good guys here. We don't have to trust them. Am I saying that Spectre and Ember are one and the same? No, I... no, no. I don't think they're the same. It really doesn't make sense. However, I do think these groups were, or still are, more connected than we first thought. In fact, Ember knows things that only Spectre should. The fact that they're so directly polar opposites that they need to have some insight onto one or the other. Not to mention the other plotline currently in the series. Spectre is currently in turmoil. The group is split into two. The more extremists, the ones who attacked Serafina, the ones in this mob, and the shadowy corporate boss. We hear from Layla, Lila, Leia, Leia. Yeah, you're right. We're divided at the moment. After our ability to Sabler became a success, many of Spectre's executives had second thoughts on what to do with it. Since then, they've abused its power and deviated from the organization's initial objective. Many of Spectre's executives? How many are there? How many of them were there? If one person had access, then they could have a drug that nullifies abilities. Would it be hard to find a way to make it do the opposite? If they go to, say, a government institution, I'm sure that the authorities would love a way to deal with people who are gaining more power than anyone they have. I've had these thoughts for so long, but nothing felt absolute. It never felt 100%. However, while rereading some of Unordinary for Blake's video, I saw this news report. Ember has struck again, this time killing superhero Spectre. Spectre? Why would you make a superhero the same name as a major organization that's integral to the storyline? I don't know why this struck me as odd, but for me, it was a subtle way of telling us or letting us know that there was a connection here. And I still think there is a connection. Here's what I think. Spectre started a while ago, and eventually discovered their famous ability nullifying drug. Once they perfected it, there was confusion on what to do with it. Some wanted to stick to their original plan, whatever that is. We are not given any information on that, at least not in the free episodes. But others were enamored by the idea of power over anyone they can lay their hands on. So, they started infighting. Some just left the group altogether, trying to forget what happened. Others left the group but stole information, trying to go to the highest bidder. Some are still connected to the database, so that's how they know what's going on. Maybe there's a spy inside a Spectre leaking information out. This is how Ember could know about Serafina's ability loss. Of course, the authorities notice and want to use it to stop the rising vigilante issue. 
However, they're struggling to figure out how to use it. They can't just inject every high tier, so they invest into making a drug that does the opposite. Boosting power levels. So that high tiers start struggling. And if that doesn't work, they send in their own operative. Of course, Ember does slightly get out of hand, due to them overcorrecting and giving a bunch of villains boosters, and now terrorizing the cities that authorities have low to no power in. If things get too far, they can always send Vulcan in to kill their own boosted villains, as they've done before. I don't know if this is true, I'll be honest. But for me, it's just so easy to say that Spectre and Ember are opposites of each other. That they're not connected at all. Everyone, the audience, many other unordinary characters, thought they were connected. Yes, there are differences, but it still doesn't make sense for these two groups to not be connected. So maybe they're not the same organization, but they're still connected in one way. Whether that be that Ember was initially a part of Spectre, but divided because they wanted power. So they went to the authorities, or the authorities went to them, giving them money to develop a drug that boosts their ability. Or whether it be that Ember has a spy inside a Spectre, leaking information. Information about their drug, information about their data, information about who they targeted. These two groups are connected. It doesn't make sense if they're not. That's why I'm making this video. Also, I wanted to make an unordinary video. And I'm waiting on John's arc to be mostly done. But that's just what I think. What about you? Was this just the mad ramblings of a person who's lost their minds? Or do you think my theory holds a little water? Leave it in the comments below. But like always, thank you for watching, and I hope I'll see you next week.